Simra is four years old. Like other children her age, she goes to preschool and does swimming lessons. She is inquisitive and loves trying new things. However, Simra is one of the two million Australians who are affected by a rare disease in their lifetime. Simra's mother, Fatima Mirza, says that it took many months to obtain a diagnosis for Simra's condition, reflecting how ill-equipped the medical field and the community is in the area of rare illnesses and disabilities. Autism, for example, is so huge and everyone knows about it, everyone's aware of it, whereas rare, rare illnesses get sort of, you know, shoved to the side and there's nothing that says, you know, integration and I think that's really important. Simra has Jobert syndrome, a rare genetic illness that is characterised by the absence of the area of the brain which controls balance and coordination. Simra also has Leber's congenital amaurosis, a rare disease that causes visual impairment. There is no cure for these conditions. Dr Sushila Nand, a GP in the Sydney southwest area, says that Australia is lagging behind many first world countries in terms of government support for people living with disabilities and rare illness. I think it all starts from the top. Firstly, the politicians need to be aware. Everything's driven through evidence, collecting data and so forth. The politicians need to be aware that these are the needs uh, they need to identify. And secondly, they need to provide more funding. The politicians are very wary of providing more funding. Uh, everywhere there's a problem. Yani Sujonu, a music therapist and operations manager at Nordoff Robbins Music Therapy Australia, says that it can be frustrating not having any government support. We don't actually have um, government support. We've had projects for, you know, short projects for um, two years or three years that's been funded by the government. But apart from that, it's yeah, funded by um, non-government organisations. Um, yes, it can be frustrating, but we're always trying to chip in, you know, in, into the local government, into federal and state, just to, to, to show what we do, yeah. And um, we know it's not an easy task and we have to work collaboratively with, you know, other music therapists, other organisations as well. Although there is an array of therapies that children with disabilities can access, Yani says that music therapy is still on its way to being recognised by the government as an allied health service. But we also don't want to knock people back because people do get frustrated. You know, they come in and you're, oh, we're paying this, 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 this. We really want to try music therapy, but we can't afford it. In July last year, the Australian government implemented the Better Start for Children with Disability initiative which provided up to $12,000 of early intervention funding, allowing children to access services such as physiotherapy and speech pathology. But Fatima expresses concern about the limitations of this initiative. Hearing impaired, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome and fragile X. So they're the only five categories. So if she had the Jobert and she didn't have the vision impairment, she wouldn't actually classify it she'd be sort of left in her own little thing. So, and, and that does, you know, I mean, for me, that, that's a good thing because I've got this little account, which I, I don't, you know, stretch for resources as it, as it is, um, can use to access services and things like that. So, yeah, the government needs to do a little bit more. Dr Anand believes that disability services are grossly underfunded and inadequate in terms of availability and resources and says that the government needs to implement a more streamlined and coordinated approach. And the most important area of need is the uh, provision of uh, services, uh, the allied health, because allied health is normally not covered under Medicare and it, it can be prohibitively expensive for people who need intensive therapy. Nordoff Robbins Music Therapy Australia is part of a network of centres around the world and aims to use improvised live music as a way to build a relationship and promote communication between therapists and clients, where the music acts as an agent for change and healing. Because the Music Therapy Centre is not supported by the government, it relies on fundraising to support 75% of its running costs, while the centre's clients contribute to the rest. 
I can connect with people through music at ease without the barrier of language and you know all those things. You know, sometimes language can be so complicated. Whereas if you work with music you can sometimes connect straight to the heart, to the core of it. Azul Khan reporting. Thank you.